this is Duncan from Rock and Roll Reviews, and I'm joined by John Oak from Carnival. How's it going, sir? Not too bad, yeah. Yeah. It uh, doesn't seem that long ago that you were in Scotland. Uh, no, it doesn't actually. Yeah, it does. I actually thought it was last year, but I think it was the year before. Was it? I, I thought it was last year. I, I, I couldn't quite yeah. remember. Enjoy, um, enjoy coming up this side of the world. Yeah, it is really, it is really yeah. a lovely part of the world. Yeah. yeah. We actually had a day off after the show in 2013. We got mm-hmm. to see a fair bit. Try and haggis. <laughs> All like the that. usual things. Yeah. Like the cultural stuff. We did a whiskey shop. And, uh, it was great. <laughs> yeah. F- fan of whiskey at all? Yeah, yeah that's what that helps. I, I was back there again today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stocking up. Yeah. Um, so, you guys are still out at the moment touring with uh, Asymmetry? Yeah, this is like the last sort of. The last um, leg yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's fair to say that the album was a success. A lot of people welcomed the comeback. Um, you've been touring pretty much non stop. Um, how's that experience on this particular album run? Um, been in, has it been different from like some of the other ones that you've done? Or? Um, it's a bit different because I think um, when we've sort of done the last little while, we, when we were doing sort of Sound Awake as well, um, we only just sort of started to do um, some of the European and, and sort of UK mm-hmm. really at the end of, just before we did Asymmetry, so it's yeah. been sort of, sort of more of a thorough treatment with Asymmetry, I guess, in terms of like the repeat yeah. tours on that album, and in that sense, I guess it's it's been quite different each time, mm-hmm. I guess, it's, it's, been, it's been growing each time, it's been yeah. really positive for us. So. Yeah, I was reading um, that you guys are getting ready to do a um, 10 year anniversary of the matter in yeah. um, Australia, which just blew my mind that that album was ten years old because yeah, no, really <laughs> I remember when <laughs> it came out. So, um, and you guys all started quite young anyway in terms of the band and stuff. Yeah. Um, how have things changed musically? I, I mean, for, from our point of view on this side of the world, uh, it seems like Australia has really kind of got its act together when it comes to music at the moment, especially kind of genre specific stuff. Yeah. Seems to be a lot more bands making their way over here. Is that something that you're aware of? Um, a, yeah, I've, I've noticed there's been quite a, a lot of bands sort of ma- pushing their stuff over here mm-hmm. and it's sort of been a little bit um, easier, I think, because it's, it's the more bands that do it, it seems to like give an expectation almost an allowance for other Australian mm-hmm. bands to do it as well, like, in a weird kind of way. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think that it's most, like, for me, it's it, the remoteness that we have in Australia kind of means that we have to do our own thing to a degree yeah. and um, it's a lot of, lot of space and it's, it can get quite boring so you might as well mm-hmm. start a rock band. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, know. you guys have always, the, the thing that always got me about Carnival as a band was that it was very, very difficult to kind of pigeonhole you specifically in one particular kind of camp or sound, you guys really seem to bring quite a lot to the table on every release and you, you don't sound the same, I mean it's, it's clearly Carnival on every album but you, you kind of, it's almost as if you specifically try and go in a different direction with each release, is that something you're conscious of or is it more a kind of organic process when it comes to the writing? It's it's conscious but it is still organic and I yeah. think going back to what you asked before about you know how, how things change since mm-hmm. the matter musically. I think that's probably the biggest, the best way to sort of dis- describe it is yeah. that each time we've done a record, when we do the next record, we kind of just want to do something different anyway. Yeah. So it invari- invariably ends up being a you know, different record. <laughs> and each time, and, and that doesn't mean that we're going to, it doesn't mean to say that we wouldn't go revisit it the previous yeah. sound, you know, like we're not going to just constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we, for the sake of. Yeah, it's just for the sake of change. Yeah. So that's, I guess in that sense, it's more of an organic thing where we feel like we want to be writing at that time or what we're missing from a creative sort of output point of view, where, you know, what we haven't done for a while or what we feel like doing now or whatever. So. In, in terms of that creative process, is that one that is carried out on the on the road, or is it more a uh, you tour, you concentrate on that tour, when you go home, you then start writing material, or is it a, a constant? It cycle? is a constant thing, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's um, because um, 
We've written a fair bit of music away on tour, even just the beginnings of songs. Like, I think a lot of Asymmetry started with a lot of audio memos and stuff that we had. Like, right. you know, we'd, I'd, I'd often spend a bit of time with the acoustic that we'd have on tour for, some, you know, for some promo stuff or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or if we were doing change. But um, I'd just mess around with it and write some stuff, some of the other guys with as well. And these days, given the... Um, sort of time that we have with Kenny because he's got a sort of event in Tokyo as well mm-hmm. we sort of like to maximise the time that we've got with yeah. him so we have been trying this time a little bit more a little bit harder not as successfully as we planned but <laughs> yeah. definitely it has, has been on our minds to be riding and sort of yeah. putting things together yeah. as we've been going on the road you know as sound checks and stuff like that yeah yeah just depends on what well, you know, the day-to-day changes how, how uh, possible that is. Mm-hmm. So, um, like you were saying, this is kind of bringing to a close um, the kind of asymmetry sort of uh, touring cycle for that album. Um, there was a bit of a break in between your your second album and the third album. Um, is there going to be a similar break or is it more a kind of we want to get the next one done and Every time out. we've put something out, we've wanted to get the next one. Out. <laughs> and if you look at the, the releases from 2001, which yeah. was our EP, 2005, Fumata, yeah. 2009, Soundwave, 2003, it's been four years every time. Yeah, yeah. It's like the Olympics kind of thing. Yeah. And it's, there's nothing, we've, well, we've tried to, we've tried everything to try and, yeah. you know, and maybe we'll figure that out this time around. But <laughs> a track record says no, but I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm still optimistic. Yeah. You know. So yeah, but you know, it just, it just 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 depends on um, I don't know how how it's, it's really hard to say. Yeah. The, the desire to do that is is always there. Yeah. yeah, I suppose at the end of the day, as long as the end process is something that you're happy with, it takes four years to get there. It takes four years. Well, that's at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. If it if it still takes four years, we're going to take four years. Yeah. But we will constantly be trying. It. Even three would be good. Yeah. <laughs> It would be such an achievement. <laughs> um, so is this the final tour then, or do you have another one in the pipeline? Any festivals but for the no, summer? No, no festivals really, just the Aussie tour. Mm-hmm. And then I think it, mainly just because we really want to concentrate on writing and sort of getting the next sort of release that mm-hmm. we do out and, you know, in a quicker time basically. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to spend most of this year just doing that and shows pop up or whatever, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good to keep your hand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the final thing I'll ask you is the website that we, we work for, uh, Rock and Wheel Reviews, does um, music reviews of punk rock and metal, but we also tackle some movie reviews. Um, do you get much of a chance to see many, many movies? And if you do, have you seen anything recently that you've liked or disliked? Or? Um, I saw Interstellar. Uh-huh. Love that. Mm-hmm. Saw Imitation Game. Love that. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen anything that sucks lately. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't actually seen that much. So. Yeah. <laughs> They're out there, but that's, yeah. that's, not, that's not a bad thing. Most of the time, I guess, we get to see stuff in planes. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. where, you know if they've got the entertainment system, which yeah. on long flights is kind of... Yeah, well, it helps. <laughs> it helps a lot, yeah. Do you find yourself uh, gravitating towards any particular genre of movie? Or are you quite eclectic? Or? Very eclectic, yeah. yeah. I'll watch anything, really. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have a huge. Uh, I mean, I like things that have sci-fi. Mm. I have to admit, but I also like it's a twist. Hey, I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks very much for giving us a bit of time. I know you guys are just getting ready to go on, so all the best for the show. And it was a pleasure speaking to you, Jono. Pleasure too. Right. Easy. Thanks very much.